nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy, Big Johnny G, the two gun fix it presents Legendary Gaming. Alright everyone, up for something a little different than usual, are we? Well, I know I am. So recently I had to make a trip out to Target to go pick up a few supplies, and I haven't been to Target in a long time. Now I know Target has become fairly big uh, in the board gaming community. There's a lot of exclusive games, a lot of exclusive things with Target, including board games. So while I was there, I couldn't help myself but to go check out what they have on sale board games at Target. So why don't you come take a walk with me through my local Target and we'll do a quick review of Target's board games. I'll see you all down at, well, I'll see you all at Target. <laughs> All right, starting down here, the bottom show. Oh, no, heading up top, that's right, up top. And let's stop. Okay, never have I ever. That's kind of like the old party game, right? This turned it into an actual box game. And uh, Raising Hell, see, Catan, that's actually on the next shelf over. A Misery Index. Misery Index this is a TV show, that's it, huh? So uh, the, the Tenderloins, the Impractical Jokers, they have this game show where you hear two miserable stories and you have to pick which is considered the most miserable as determined by uh, teams of psychologists or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's kind of funny, they got a game for that now, huh? All right, and uh, let's see, moving on. Okay, the second, <laughs> what do we have here in the second level here? We got War with the Evil Power Master. So that was based on the old 80s and 90s Choose Your Own Adventure books, uh, the Path books. And I actually did a couple of playthroughs of that right here on the channel. It's a really fun game. Uh, and the nostalgia aspect is just through the roof. It really is. Cards Against Humanity. Okay, great classic uh, party game that that's become. One Night a Werewolf the werewolf mafia style games they're very popular and that's one of the more popular ones from what i can gather uh of the werewolf games one night they do a whole series is one night vampire one night alien uh, a few others i think and they got an expansion the five six player expansion for settlers of Catan. okay that's this is gonna go down a little quick let's see this next level Ah, stop. <laughs> All right, next time I do something like this, I have to move the camera a little slower. Uh, what do you meme? I don't know anything about that game. Do you know anything about it? Okay, there's an office game hidden in the back. A stick figure game. I'm not sure what that is. Friends, the one with the ball. See that one right over there in the, almost pretty much the middle, right? So I looked that one up. I looked that one up. Uh, and that is that is actually just like the episode, the one with the ball, where they get into this competitive uh, keep the ball afloat kind of thing uh, between them. And so it's based on that. And I read that, like the episode, you have to keep the ball moving and now with specific TV show inspired challenges while you're doing that. <laughs> All right, uh, if, you're, if you're a fan of Friends or you know someone that is, I'm sure that would be an interesting game to look into. Uh, Imploding Kittens, that's the expansion. And we see that below it also. Below that uh, top shelf, the uh, Imploding Kittens which is an expansion for Exploding Kittens, and they also have, I guess we're doing the bottom shelf now too, also have uh, the uh, Not Safe for Work edition of Exploding Kittens, 
along with you got crabs. That whole bottom shelf is like pretty much onion stuff, right? And I have, I own and have played all of those games. And as far as as far as little party style, small number, but party style games with your friends that aren't really that big of gamers, these these fit that category. These, uh, these are definitely fun, fast little games that have uh, familiar mechanics. Ah, I think there's another shelf down there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Telestrations After Dark. I'll tell you the truth. I've, I've seen that name. I've seen that board game title. Uh, After Dark, I think, is new. Maybe that's a, an expansion or standalone. But I don't know anything about it. Same thing with the Awkward Family Photos. I've seen that around, but I don't know anything about it. And honestly, neither of those two games made me want to go look anything up about them. But that's just because that's that neither of them seem what I'm looking for, right? That's what she said. <laughs> I did not plan that. Uh, obviously, I don't know what that game is, but that looks like another uh, party style game uh, light enough for your non-gamer friends to be able to sit down and have a good time. That's what that looks like. And there's the classic Catan, Settlers of Catan, which has become almost Monopoly risk-like in uh, in how popular that it has, has become. Okay, now let's get on to the next level, uh, next section of shelves. That was, whew, fast. Catan continues up here. Ah, I see that they also have the Funkoverse strategy games available at Target. And by the way, no, Target is not paying me to do this. I wish they were. <laughs> and neither are any of these companies. Uh, so the Funkoverse, I, uh, I know I've seen, uh, there's a DC Heroes one I've seen. And right here, there is the Jurassic Park and the Harry Potter. And then a Funkoverse Kool-Aid Man. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Okay, so I, I have not played the Funkoverse games, but I've heard nothing but good things about them, that apparently they are quite fun. So if, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, or if you happen to see the DC one, you might want to check that out. I, I, I don't know. You might like it. Got it. Okay, so things on this shelf level that jump out to me, definitely. Now, Azul I've not played, but this is the kind of game that all gamers have been talking about. So I don't know anything about it, but uh, it's very, very popular. Maybe I should learn something about it. And I uh, don't know what that one after Azul is. But then we have War of the pa Evil Power Master again. But right above that, that's what I wanted to point out. Right above that is uh, two boxes called Disney Villainous. And that's the main game and one of the expansions. I'm not sure which one. Now, again, I haven't played this game, but this is one of the most highly regarded games that have come out. I think it came out last year or late the year before. Uh, yeah, probably. And, and this game has just garnered such praise. They have now just released or just about to release another version of this uh, called Marvel Villainous using all the Marvel villains. And yeah, you get to play the villains in the game. So that's, that's really cool. Jumanji the next level uh, had to look that up because it caught my attention I want to know something about it so apparently uh, you get to play from the as the characters from from the uh, second movie and you get to go around collecting treasure tokens while battling an evil force that's apparently struck the world well the virtual world the gaming world the Jumanji world <laughs> So that kind of looks interesting. I wouldn't mind looking uh, looking at some videos about that and see if it does anything else to, to catch my attention. Let's move on. Down to the next level. That is my thumb. Hi, thumb. <laughs> okay. So here, uh, classic chess checkers, of course. Great games to always start with. One of the smaller of the oh, there's two there's two uh, expansion packs I believe. Evil comes prepared. They have a few extra copies of that. Minecraft. Other than the fact that Minecraft is usually popular, I don't know uh, anything about this board game version of it. 
And I noticed Top Gun, highly popular. Tom Cruise movie in the 1980s. And now it's apparently a board game. But I'm not curious enough to look into it further. I really wasn't a big fan of the movie, now how popular the movie was. But still, I noticed Minecraft is by Ravensburger. But I don't think Top Gun is. Oh, don't want to miss this level here. Okay, Ticket to Ride Europe is a great game. I have that. I've played that. Um, uh, there's an Alexa app that if, if you have Ticket to Ride, Ticket to Ride Europe, uh, that you can actually learn from Alexa. She will teach you how to play. And she can even act as another player. If you're all alone and you want to play Ticket to Ride, you can play a two-player game with her. Or if there's three of you and you want a fourth player, she can play for you. So that's really interesting. It's a really fun game uh, that has broken up a few friendships over the years since its creation. <laughs> it is a very competitive game and is very backstabbing and yeah, has ruined a few friendships from what I understand. Jurassic Park Danger by Ravensburger and Jaws. Now I have Jaws, I've played Jaws, you've seen Jaws on this channel. If you've watched, if you subscribe, uh, you've gotten the notifications for it. Uh, Jurassic Park, I don't know. I'm interested to try. I'm interested to try it, especially since uh, I I own and have recently played Dinosaur Island, which is, let's face it, Jurassic Park. I would really like to play and compare the two. But Jaws, let me tell you, Jaws is a fantastically fun game. This is a one versus all game where one person is is Bruce, is the shark, is Jaws, and the other player or players, up to three other players. Uh, battling Jaws will be playing Brody, Quint, and Hooper. All, all three of them are played. So if it's only a two-player game, one will play Jaws, and the other player will play all three of the uh, event. Well, eventually the crew of the Orca. That's another cool thing about the game. It's done in two acts, two parts, and uh, the first part is the island, Amnesty Island, and the second part is on the Orca. And uh, wow, I have so much fun with this game. Uh, I think even someone that's not a fan of the movie is going to enjoy it, but if you are a fan of the movie, please play this game. <laughs> uh, it's nice that they have it over in Target. It looks like Target is carrying all the Ravensburger titles, I guess. All right, let's see. Moving on. Now on the bottom shelf, I'm seeing Pandemic. And Pandemic, Rapid Response. I don't know Rapid Response. Uh, no Pandemic, Love Pandemic. We have Showcase Pandemic here. Uh, that is a great competitive, uh, not, I'm sorry, co cooperative game. That is a great cooperative game. Uh, one of the best, uh, I think, personally in the market. Maybe not the, but somewhere in the in the top 10 or 5, arguably, depending on who you are and what your particular likes are. Horrified. Now, this is something that was actually has been on the Two Gun Pixie gaming radar. Uh, it is a game that we've been looking into. And it looks really interesting, uh, especially using all the old Universal movie monsters. Uh, it just really looked uh, interesting, and I, I'm i glad it's on my radar. Let's see if it gets to the shelf, though. And Imploding Kittens, Imploding Kittens, uh, expansion for Exploding Kittens. Now they implode. <laughs> uh, and by the way, that game plays like Hot Potato. Uh, the game plays like a game of hot potatoes, uh, exploding kittens. Oh, wait. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the game. I had to look that up. I did. I took a look at that. I grew up in Mr. Rogers. And King Friday and Sarah Saturday. Uh, there was... It was... Something as a child you looked forward to, especially growing up in the 70s, as it would be now if he was still around or doing something like this. But yeah, it was it was it was peaceful. It was nice and peaceful, and it always came across as a really nice guy, the kind of guy you would want as a neighbor or maybe an uncle or something like that. So yeah, so a game based on this. So I looked it up. I looked it up for you. Uh, so in this game, you are building your own neighborhood. And you're using characters from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood itself. Uh, from the Neighborhood characters to the characters from uh, Land of Make-Believe. Uh, like like I was saying, like King Friday. And you do this by using a set collection mechanism for the game is what it does. Mechanic. Uh, uh, trying to get certain sets together and then you have them in your neighborhood. So that just, that just seemed like uh, really fun. 
really fun. Nice, nice cool tip of the hat. You know, uh, thank you to Mr. Rogers that now new generation of kids are going to get to know his name, at least through this game, right? Mm. Okay, so continuing. Whoosh, pushing back up to the top and then over. Hold on. <laughs> Space Marines. That's that's a title that really has been around for a while. Um, minute, if, if it's what I'm thinking of, it's a miniatures-based game. But uh, wh <laughs> what caught me is right there in the middle. How can you miss? How can you miss Bob Ross? Especially Bob Ross, Bob Rost, <laughs> so to speak, with the two Bob Rosses there. Um, I. I do know that the, the first one there, the one with uh, his painting in his fro, <laughs> that one I know a little bit about. That's called The Art of Chill. And what you were doing is you were uh, using and mixing and matching different uh, colors to get the right colors uh, from your palette onto the canvas to finish the painting. And the more you do correct, the more chill you are. Yeah. If you don't know Bob Ross, just Google Bob Ross. You don't gonna need nothing else. It'll come up. <laughs> um, nothing else that I really bothered to look up into. Uh, Furglers. I don't know. It looks like a fun uh, aim for child age, you know, category gamers. And uh, Loaded Answers. Looks like a party game, but I didn't really look into it because... I've played party games, I enjoy party games, but I don't look into party games, you know? If they're there, I play them. If I have fun, I have fun. If I don't, I don't. That's my take on party games. But let's see what else we can take a look through here. Ah, you better go. They got a bunch of happy little accidents over in Target. Okay. Now this next level, code names. That's that's been all over board game news for last several years. Ticket to Ride New York, same idea as the one from uh, Europe or the base game, but uh, uh, placed here in New York. So of course, yeah, might as well be selling it in New York City, right? But now, now the la okay, hold on. The last game, Party Bowl. Wow, I'm not even noticing to right now this moment when I when I went through this video to see what I wanted to do a quick little look into. I didn't even notice that because I saw a blockbuster board game and a trapper keeper. Really? So I wanted to look them up. So the blockbuster game is a uh, sort of a combo of a movie trivia game meets charades. Uh, that seems to be what the write-up was telling me about it. And... I don't know. Have you played it? Is it worth it? Or should you just... Like play a eighties movie trivia game and charades by themselves since they kind of already exist. But Trapper Keeper, so I looked at that also, and so this um eighties and nineties high school setting, and you uh you win the game by gaining points, and you gain points by by getting sets and collections together, such as collecting your homework properly done. Uh, collecting your report cards, or collecting field trip OK slips, um, receiving notes from fellow classmates, and even notes for for squiggles that you draw, <laughs> and then you keep them all in your trapper keeper. I don't know. That just sounds like really forced. Actually, both of them do. The Blockbuster game and the Trapper Keeper game, it really just seems like unnatural. <laughs> Can a board game seem unnatural? If so, I, I, I am so not interested in either of those two. But they leapt out to me enough that I looked them up. So maybe they're the kind of games that you're going to like. Or maybe you can find out what Party Bowl is, because I didn't even notice it. Those other two took such exception in my mind. All right, let's uh, let's take a look. There's another shelf going down. Uh, okay, let's hold on. We can get two shelves. Let's look at these two shelves we got here. 
Ooh, okay. Um, super fight. I know super fight's a fun game. I got that. It's a it's sort of a what if argument game where you and your friend or friends, through uh, the random pick of cards, will get a character and a thing. And if you have the blue location deck, you can use that to have a location, and uh, you put them together. Like so, maybe you drew a card that said Captain Kirk. And then you drew a thing that said riding a velociraptor. And your opponent got um, Aunt May with the item card um, Sonic Screwdriver. And they're at the location of the uh, world's largest toilet bowl. Who would win? And then it's, it's a debate game. So back and forth, you debate each other and decide who wins. In a nutshell, that's what it is. That's really fun. Oregon Trail, I have, I've played. It is it is really fun for what it is. The small little game that it is that is based on the classic, iconic, old school, original school uh, text game of the same name, the Oregon Trail. You've died of dysentery. And uh, yes, in this you will too as you try and usually fail to make it to the city goal. <laughs> uh, Big Bang Ultimate Genius Game. Ultimate Genius Game. Uh, it's the Ultimate Genius Party Game. And I looked at that because I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the television show. So this is four games that they were torn right from the show. Uh, there's an office game. I didn't bother looking that up. I Descent. I didn't... I didn't even notice those. Looking at how fun games they have there, like Oregon Trail and Super Fight, and looking into the Big Bang Theory, I didn't even look at that. But now down to the next level, I know you saw this. I know you saw this, you've been looking at it, you're like, Big John, will you freaking get to this? What the hell is that? So I had the same exact thought with keeping it sexy. Keeping it sexy is a game based on Kenny G. Probably the world's most well-known Flutists, saxophonists, whatever the hell he puts in his mouth. <laughs> Don't look into that. <laughs> yeah, I heard it that time. So uh, the players work together. It's a cooperative game. And apparently, when I, when, I, when I looked into it, players work together and use the power of jazz. Yeah, man. All right, cats, use the power of jazz to keep Kenny G in the groove. A little similar to, to, Bob, to the Bob Ross game, right? Uh, and in this, you will be playing sound cards. Cards that uh, represent different sounds. And they will help to make Kenny G stay smooth, man. During his bad day. That sounds a lot like the Bob Ross game. It sounds like just a simple reskinning of it, actually. And even the cover of it looks like the cover art was slightly reskinned. Hmm... Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, we went over that, as well uh, as well as nothing else on this shelf. <laughs> Carpool Karaoke, I didn't bother looking into. Uh, sure, the show is worth a good laugh or two, but I wasn't about to look into it for the game. The Shining. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know I looked into that. So this, uh, and it's by, uh, is it by Ravensburger? Yes, it is, I believe. Right there, Ravensburger. This is a hidden trader game, and it takes place all around Overlook Hotel. And during the course of the game, you are going to be having to save to use willpower to get through everything and eventually find out who the trader is and escape with your lives. Okay, I like hidden trader games. I, I like games based on franchises I enjoy. So I want to I wanna check this one out. I definitely do. Let's see what else we got down here. Show about Jumanji, Exploding Kittens, Heist, eh. On the bottom shelf, Risk. I guess Ticket to Ride First Journey would be a good introdu introduction uh, for kids to the uh, Ticket to Ride uh, game and concept. But now, moving over to the next shelf. Let's see what is here. So, uh, 
get it in, hold it right there. Before you go any further, Cat Crime Catchphrase, Pictionary, we all know and love Pictionary, Classic Games, Categories has been around for decades, I believe Sequence has as well. All right, might as well keep going. Uh, blank Slate, Chickapig, Chickapig, don't know that. Uh, Jumanji, oh, that's a Jumanji based on the original. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> yes, now this, this I wanted to look into. Pac-Man. Come on, I don't know how many quarters I fed into that, The Misses, and every other arcade game I could find. So, I wanted to look it up. And it looks pretty interesting, it looks fun, of course, as you would expect. Yes, it is a one versus all game. But, other than that, there's nothing else for me to tell you. If you know the classic arcade game, that's it. One person is playing Pac-Man. The others are the ghosts. Is it uh, Pinky, Blinky, Inky, and Clyde? <laughs> and they're trying to catch Pac-Man. And he's going around eating up all the, the, the dots and the power pellets. So, I want to try this game. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Uh, apples to Apples, classic game. Upwards. Telestrations. Escape Room in a Box Flashback I've not played an Escape Room board game, but the Alexa Skills do does have uh, an Escape Room game that has uh, several uh, I think three uh, Escape Rooms that you can try and that was fun. I, I tried two of them. I got through two of them. I haven't tried the third most difficult one yet, but uh, there's also quite a few escape room board games uh, that I've seen. This one doesn't look familiar. Oh, we also got Risk. I played a lot of Risk as a kid. Never a big fan of it. I always actually uh, preferred to Stratego, to tell you the truth. Anyway, back up. Top over here. Anything? No. I, mean, I don't know anything about these games. And didn't bother looking them up. Monopoly Speed. Uh, Simon. Okay, no Simon. And a Simon when I was a kid. Just follow the codes as it presses out. Chess Checkers. Giant Jumbling Tower. It's like Jenga. Uh, Simon Flipside. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we got like Rubik's Cube style things. We got the Simon game. Quirkle Blocus. Bloku. Fish for fish. Don't know that. Okay. Bells. Then that was that bananagrams. Anyway, we're, we're we're getting down into the younger section here now, which is why a lot of these I don't I don't always know. Battleship shots. Shark bite. Mouse trap. Uh, we got a new version of it. We played that a couple of months ago here on the channel. Kerplunk. I remember playing that as a kid. I had a copy. My Aunt Charlene got me one when I was a kid. One of my friends had Crossfire. I can't remember who, but they never seemed to have all the damn ball bearings that you shoot out at each other. What a great game for kids. Apples to apples. Bop it. No. See, yeah, these are all way too young for me, but maybe there's something here. That you remember from your childhood, Yeti in my spaghetti. Wow, that is funny. Uh, maybe there's something you remember from your childhood, or you think might be good for a, a child of yours, your child, your nephew, your niece, whoever. Porcupine pop, ouch. Zingo, shark bites, lucky ducks, count your chickens. Oh, Mr. Bucket. I, I seem to remember Mr. Bucket. Oh, he's Olaf. Watch my butt. Well, that Toy Story game there looks like a version of Concentration. They all pop up after a certain time. If you don't get them all put in fast enough. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're getting pretty darn close to the end here. Family Charades. Mega Maze. That looks like something that would have been around in the 70s. Red light, green light, one, two, three. Baby shark. I remember having something like that. There's 
words. All right, maybe there's something here for a child young enough. For, whoa, okay, around the corner. <laughs> On the display end, I forgot there were these. Shoots and ladders, Candyland, Ski Ball. Grew up playing those games. More tickets to ride. Pandemic Hot Zone, I don't know anything about. Well, okay, that looked like about it. That was an abrupt ending. Now, you know, I'll do this again, sure. If I'm in a store like Target or Walmart or Barnes & Noble and they have these uh, these games, I'm going to do this again. This is kind of fun. Uh, now I know. I know. Uh, I know this is going to be fun. It's going to be good. So thank you very much for checking this out. I'm your buddy, Big John and G. For two good picks and presents. Legendary Gaming, and my friends, I am out of here. <laughs>